Welcome to a Parallel Project Training APM Project Fundamentals Qualification Podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 7th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, podcasts and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com Hello, welcome to Noah Paolo Project Training Podcast. I'm Paul Neighbour, and today we're going for the seventh edition of the Body of Knowledge. Uh, with me is Michelle. Hello, Michelle. How are you? Hello, all good. good. Quite an exciting topic we're going to do now. Yes. Uh, we're going to do uh, life cycles for those people who are doing the peer project management fundamentals qualification. So we've got some four quite high level um, uh, learning outcomes we've got to look at or assessment criteria. Mm. State the phases in a typical project life cycle. State the phases in a typical iterative project life cycle. Um, define the term hybrid life cycle. Define the term extended project life cycle. Mm. Mm. So it's, as part of this change, the body of knowledge, they've identified these different types of life cycle now. Yeah, that's right, Paul. Is, is it worth us kind of taking a step back, first of all, and understanding what a life cycle is? Oh, that is? would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Mm. <laughs> so what, what do you kind of see as a, a life cycle? A life cycle is just a way of breaking the f- project into steps, really. Yeah. And, and putting some controls around those steps. So they're really useful for, for governance, for um, knowing what the rules are. So yeah. keeping key stakeholders involved at key points, getting buy-in. Managing Knowing costs. where you are, managing costs, yeah. understanding it's a communication aid really you know we're at mm. we're at the deployment phase it sort of like helps everybody understand where we are really i think anything's always easier if you break it down into smaller chunks yes. and that's what our life cycle it's like is eating doing. an elephant <laughs> <laughs> nice nice analogy <laughs> yeah, it's not mine <laughs> so <clears throat> so it gives you a roadmap aspect that everybody you you your sponsors your senior management and the team members can understand where we are mm. So shall we start with linear? Yeah, that's the easiest, isn't it? So the, so we, we could just uh, state the phases, concept, definition, deployment and transition. Mm. And that's it, really. So what, what, what happens in concept then? Mm. So I think concept's about the, um, the why and the, okay. the, what's the, the purpose of, yes. of the project. Yes. And um, what's kind of the, the background. Um, perhaps looking at feasibility here. Yeah. Um, and the key thing that you um, you outline, you develop here is the business case. The outline business case. Mm. Yeah. So basically that's going to release the m- funding. So why do we have to do that? Why do we have to have a concept phase? Mm, I think you've got to um, be able to justify it and get sign off. It gives you need to get some clarity. money from somebody somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've got this fantastic idea for this brilliant new website. Can I have some money? No. <laughs> So it's not going to go anywhere, is it? <laughs> We've usually got to ask for that money from someone more senior yes, as well. Yes, unless so. you're spending your own money. And even yeah. then, it's a good idea to uh, write Get down a business case as a, as a process to, to think through the options. Mm. Good. So the next stage is, so I've got this rough idea. Mm. Um, next stage is to develop that idea in more detail, really. Yeah. Which is what That's definition, definition, definition is all about. Mm. So it's about fully understanding the requirements for the work, really. Um, what are we gonna? What are we actually gonna do? And this is where you come up with gonna, with your plan, isn't the it? The budgets like, and mm. the timelines and all the details associated with doing that. Mm. Why wouldn't you do that work in concept? Do you think? Why wouldn't? I think you might start to think about it in concept, mm. but I think it's um, it's a bit risky because you might not get signed off. You might yeah, not you might get, go to your boss and they say no, and you've wasted weeks. You've and done weeks all and that weeks. planning for, yeah. for nothing. Yeah. So you, you're going to look at perhaps high level kind of time scales, high level budgets in your concept phase, but yeah. you're going to get down into the nitty gritty a bit yeah. more in definition. So in, we just talked about doing a new website, you know. So in this stage, you might get quotes in from suppliers and things mm. like that. You know, get talk to some suppliers, get their ideas, really understand what changes you want to make, what you, how you're going to measure success, really. Mm. So that allows us to go into deployment. Deployment. It's a funny word, deployment, isn't it? It's yes. sort of like has military connotations you're going to get deployed yes because <laughs> it's not actually it's it's i'd call it development yeah the meaning for me so it's like or delivery it's yeah often yeah used. it's delivery so it's 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 implementing the plans producing yeah. the products producing the outputs um whatever we said we were going to make or develop we're now going to actually go and and, and make do it, it. yes do it. Yes. So it's the actual doing of the project. Yes, everything up to sort of the point where you go live aspect. Mm. In a sort of in this classical linear life cycle, it's it's everything up until the point where you put it to use, really. Mm. 
Yep, so your team's going to be really busy um, building and, and um, developing your website or yeah. your, your product. Yeah. And then transition. Mm. So transitions mm. about where we, we actually hand over, we go from being a project yes. to um, going into business as usual, going yes. into normal business. So would you business. include going live in that, sort of switching it on? I think it's the process of going through okay. through that. So we transition from um, being perhaps a, a prototype to an actual, actual kind of product. So talking about a little example of a new website, you'd, mm. that's when you switch it on to the whole world to look at. That's right. They go, ooh, <laughs> that scary moment where people would look at it. Or a new IT system, you might switch it on. Yeah. Or a new hospital, you'd go from... Practical, you know, the new pa- the, the the patients would walk into walk the ward, in the door, walk That's in right. the door for the first time, and and the people that have been involved in developing it, so the IT developers yes. or the contractors, then start to step back. And your people that are going to operate it are going to step forward. So in your hospital example, your facilities managers are then starting to take, take the reins, take ownership. Good. That's right. Good. So then we're moving on to these iterative life cycles. So mm. it's probably when we worth... talk about an iterative life cycle, mm. um, that's where the requirements are a little bit more difficult to nail down. I think that's where iterative life cycles come in. Yeah. Where where you want to have a more um, explorative approach to to figuring out what the what the what the people want. So um, there are some more phases. They're called the sort of pre-project phase. So that's sort of yeah. getting getting some cool agreement that we can do this project that is uh, actually worthwhile investing the time and the effort and the resources in it. Mm. So you tend to get pre-project looking at your feasibility and then going into your, your development. So you, you go through multiple iterations, which is where the iterative comes from. So we go through an, an assemb- assemble, review and deploy. So what you're effectively doing throughout an iterative life cycle is you... Um, build a little bit or you develop a small part of a website or a product that's why it works quite well for software and then you grow on it and, and then you, you go it. okay that's not quite right or yeah. we go in this direction yes. now so it's as you say it's, it it's tends more evolutionary to be, yeah when you when you're not quite sure what you want at the start so those linear life cycles it tends to be very clear scope yes. very yes. clear requirements like a hospital mm. We've got, we know what the kind of drawing's going to look like. Yes. We know how many yes. kind of wards we want. Um, whereas in, in iterative, we're, we're not quite sure what it's going to look like at the end. It depends on user feedback. I think user feedback is much more involved uh, Absolutely. in a website or application development than, mm. say, a hospital, you know. Um, yeah. So, 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 so let's just list the phases out because mm. that's what they're learning um, criteria say we have to do so pre-project pre-project is about is this worth doing yep feasibility phase is basically uh, evaluating whether whether it, what options we're going to explore whether yep. it's worth doing and and what's the the high level costing is going to be yep. to get to the end and, and do we want to invest in it foundations is about uh, deciding what what stages we might go through, what mm. sprint plans we might, what what sections we might do, how many goes we might have to get it right. We might outline overall. what time boxes we're going to use That's at right. this point. So right. we might define out sort of uh, predetermined chunks of time. Yes, that's right. Um, and how many we've got. That's right, to, to, to get to that launch point. Mm. Yeah. Um, so that's foundations. Then development is about um, this iterative bit that you talked about, which is assembling all the... The new products so code is a good example so you're going to uh, create a, a load of software code you're going to put it all together you're mm. going to review it you're going to and then you're going to deploy it out to to the users mm. so that's going to be an update and then you'll then get their feedback on what they like and what they don't like and what they use and what they get stuck on and that's and then you go through that loop again so you'll reassemble uh, mm. change modules change parts of the software mm. review them and test them and deploy them I think this is one um, benefit of doing an iterative life cycle, because if we go through what you might have seen as a a traditional kind of waterfall linear approach, you get to the end of like a a big chunk of development or deployment and you give the the product to the customer and they go, that's not what I want. Oh, that's not what what, what I wanted. It doesn't work. A a lot of it's data driven nowadays. Mm. So uh, we can measure what people use and like and and where they get stuck by by tracking their analytics on the so you can tweak the course al- along the way yeah um 
But in reality, we probably don't tend to use kind of a, a pure linear or a pure iterative life cycle. We kind of use a little bit of a mix between the two. Yeah. So that brings us to a, a hybrid life cycle. So a hybrid life cycle combines the best of both worlds, I suspect you could say. Yeah. <laughs> but I think in, in large organisations, quite often they have um, funding constraints. So you have to get funding from... Um, senior management or or the project might be part of a portfolio so or funders might external funding people might be coming in mm. so you still have to have that concept phase to demonstrate the the cost benefit analysis in terms of a high level business case but you mm. might do your definition phase a bit different yeah so you might get your users involved in in building proofs of concept and prototypes and getting feedback from users and say what about this what about that what mm. about the other so you might sort of start defi- in your definition with um very unclear requirements yes. and, you, and you use that more iterative approach to hone yeah, them down. Yeah, you can think of this as more of an outcome-based mm. uh, approach to the project. So what are we hoping to achieve? Yeah. And you get the users to say what they like, you show them a, a working prototype and they feedback on that and then you develop the next stage. And then at some point you go, right, well, this is something we want to roll out to everybody. <laughs> so you go for that deployment um, which you might do in tranches. So you might do your deployment a little bit of a time, a little bit of, you know, you might do we were talking about um, universal credit to choose a terrible example yes. <laughs> you know you might do it geographically or you might do yep. it various classes of people uh, yep. deployed and then at the end of the project you've got the transition so that's basically the project team's now finished all the deployments and the, and the, and the developments mm. come to an end and it's going to go live on the on the government website and so you need to make arrangements for support and and, and documentation and, and all that sort of stuff mm-hmm so basically, we've got a lot more flexibility now than we used to have. Exactly. You know, we've got a linear life cycle. We've got a more agile, iterative life cycle. And I think a lot of organisations I know, they're, they're stuck with this hybrid life cycle. Which one do you use Absolutely. in a particular project? I think you've got to kind of use what's, what's right for, for that particular project and, and adapt it. Yeah, I would talk to your, your sponsors, mm. get your sponsors' input, talk to the project office if you've got a project office. Mm. So what about an extended project life cycle, Paul? Extended project life Oh, wow. Did we forget mm. that one? So that's, um, it's something that, that, that comes at the end. So we've talked about the, the linear and the iterative life cycles, but we could extend our life cycles to um, include the acknowledgement of adoption and benefits realisation. Okay. Um, so it's it's recognising here that perhaps the team's moved on, the project manager's moved on, but somebody quite often, the sponsor, will then do the, the benefits realisation. Mm-hmm. So I think it's good, just good to acknowledge that the actual product may be delivered once and then we, we extend the life cycle to realise the benefits of that product. Yes. And that product could then go on for, for a period of so time. So adoption is the operation of that, that, mm. that service. Um, and utilisation of that service. And then benefits realisation is, is tracking, did we get the benefits that we expected to get? Absolutely. Looking back to that business case to Good. see if it was realised. Good. So more choice, more flexibility. Makes the exam a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, that's progress. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheer up. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative. To find out about our training courses, e-learning or tutor-led course, please go to www.parallelprojecttraining.com.